In this lecture, we're going to be talking about the, our aerodynamic forces and moments. And there are two forces in particular that we're going to really uh, deal with. Um, the first one is lift and the second is drag. So we'll jump into detail on, on each one of these forces. And these forces are also going to cause moments on each one of the body frame axes of our, of our vehicle. So then we'll discuss as we go along how these, how these forces are going to act are going to affect the, the moments of our aircraft. Um, well, to do that, we're going to break our discussion down into longitudinal, or in other words, the, along the direction that we're, um, tra the aircraft is traveling. And we'll do that in the, the IK frame, or the IK plane. Uh, and then we'll also talk about the lateral effects. And the, the lateral flex effects are now our side-to-side -side motion of, of the aircraft. So, as we, as we jump in, if we're really going to be getting down into the physics, we'll be, we could talk about the, the shape of our wing and, and discuss the, the static pressure below and above the, the wing. And that's how we'd really uh, determine um, uh, we, a more of a a quote-unquote truth um, model for for exactly how uh, the wind or the relative wind vector is going to affect the or is going to uh, yeah affect the forces on our on our aircraft. But um, that can be really complicated and also very uh, it can be uh, quite slow or computationally intensive. So we're going to jump in and and um, talk about some aerodynamic approximations. We're going to look at um, two different forces uh, that are going to be caused by these aerodynamics. So the, the first force is, is our lift, right? So this is really how our aircraft is going to be able to fly. So as we're going through, um, through the wind, or yeah, as we're going through the air, um, the shape of our, of our wing is going to cause this lift force. And if we look over here, our, our lift is dependent on um, the air density. It's going to be dependent on the speed at which we're traveling uh, through the air. It's going to be depend dependent upon the surface area of our aircraft. And then we'll, we're going to introduce these aerodyna an aerodynamic coefficient. We'll call it C sub L for the lift um, coefficient. And, and we'll talk about that in detail. Um, also, if we look at, so this lift is going to be, right, orthogonal to our VA vector. Uh, are the, as the air hits into our wing or hits into our aircraft, um, we're going to also experience a force in the negative direction uh, from where we uh, defined uh, V sub A. So, as the air collides with the aircraft, it's going to cause this drag force. And again, our drag force is, is a function of, of the similar variables, but we're going to define this coefficient C sub D to help us discuss the, the drag force. Now, um, we're going to also see that these, uh, the, these forces acting upon our, on our system are going to cause some moments um, that, that we'll discuss. And so then we'll look into it. So they're, again, um, functions of similar parameters. And then C is our, uh, let's see, our chord length. And then we'll have a dynamic coefficient C sub M for um, talking about the, the effect of, or yeah, the effect of various components on our, on our moment. And then we'll we'll jump into this equation here in just a minute. We'll we'll be able to understand that. But one of the cool things here, at least in the, as we're talking longitudinally, we can quickly relate the drag and lift forces uh, to our body forces. Remember, these are in the body frame. We can quickly relate those um, through our through our angle of attack. So. We'll jump in and we'll, we'll separate the, the discussion again into the longitudinal, which is basically the up and down, up down in motion or the pitching moment of the aircraft. 
Um, so we'll, we'll look at that. The pitch plane, again, this is going to be defined in our IB, KB plane. So if we were to slice the aircraft down the middle, um, we have, we have our, our, our pitching plane. So we'll talk about most of our, a lot of our discussion will be talking about the, the, uh, these moments in the longitudinal, these moments and forces in the longitudinal um, direction. And then we also have the, the lateral direction, which is our side to side. Um, so as the aircraft is doing our side slip will become a, a really important angle. Um, and then we also have our turning motion. So what's going to cause the aircraft to, to roll and, and yaw. So we'll, we'll take a look at each one of these individually. So let's first jump into the longitudinal aerodynamics. And we're going to write the, the force, the, the lift and the drag forces as functions. Again, these are, these are the same as before, but now we're going to parameterize um, each one of these um, aerodynamic coefficients. So what I'm talking about, the aerodynamic coefficients, I'm talking about these guys. Um, these, these three angle, or these three aerodynamic coefficients are going to be highly influenced by the angle of attack. So recall our angle of attack is alpha showing up here, here, and here. So we're going to say that we're going to come up with a function of these uh, coefficients in terms of alpha. And if we recall what alpha is, is if we take our, this is the, the vector coming out of the nose of the aircraft. And if we're going to project VA onto the plane, where the plane is defined by KB, oops, KB and IB. So if we project VA onto that plane, and then we rotate from that projected vector up to the IB frame, that, that angle is alpha, right? So alpha was just the, the angle from VA projected onto the IB, KB frame. Um, and this is the angle from VA to our IB, right? And recall that I sub S is the vector that's pointing along VA when VA is projected onto that IB, KB plane. So that's our, that's our angle of attack and it becomes really important for, for looking at the influence of, of these forces. Um, we are also influenced heavily by our pitch rate, so that's our, our, our Q, right? And we have, oh, I didn't have that figure up here. But basically just our, our pitching rate, so if we define the, the, our J, sorry, JB axes, and our pitching rate is gonna be looking at how we're rotating around that. But again, pitch and angle of attack are always highly, they're, they're, they can be looked at very similarly, right? So we have our pitch is the actual motion, the looking, the uh, elevation of our aircraft uh, from from the the ground plane, and then our um, when we talk about the angle of attack, it's that angle from the angle from our VA vector to to where we're pitched. Okay, so we'll have the pitch rate, angle of attack, and then we also have the elevator uh, deflection, right, which ends up popping in there. So we see that, so the, the elevator, again, we talked about how that's gonna affect our pitching, um, our, our pitch rate, and we saw that in the sim in a previous lecture. Okay, so we're gonna define these aerodynamic coefficients as functions of these three, three different parameters. So let's look first just at the lift. And, and we'll do this in detail. And uh, then in the other ones, for the other ones, we'll be able to go at it uh, rather, rather quickly. So we're approximating our lift. Again, as a, this is some nonlinear 
dynamic coefficient aerodynamic coefficient function. Oh, apparently can't spell. A E aerodynamic coefficient. But the key thing is this is this is some nonlinear function. Okay. So we're going to expand that nonlinear function using Taylor series. So if we were to look at Taylor, uh, or Taylor series expansion, we'd say that our nonlinear function, um, alpha, or C sub L of alpha Q, and we have uh, delta E, what's the other one? Uh, this is going to be equal to some C sub, or it's going to be equal to our C sub L defined at 0, 0, 0. Plus, then we're going to get, this is just Taylor expanded, expansion. So remember, Taylor series is just an infinite series saying we can express a one point in terms of basically a nominal point plus an infinite series of all the derivatives. So we'd say that, we'd say, that shouldn't be L, D sub C L D alpha, and would evaluate that at 0, 0, 0 times what our alpha value is. Plus, we'd have d, since it's a function of q, would also evaluate that, 0, 0, 0, times whatever value we choose for q. Plus, we have d, c, l, uh, oops, our partial of our elevator, Evaluate at 0, 0, 0 times whatever our elevator value is. Okay, so these are our first order effects. Now we have our second order effects. So then we'd we come in and would say we're going to do 1 half. And we'd say our second derivative, C sub L, D alpha squared times alpha squared. Plus, and then we'd have our cross term, CL with D alpha, whoops, D alpha, D, uh, let's see, what was another one? Q times alpha and Q plus, so these would all be, and we'd do all of our main terms and our cross terms. This would be second order. And then we'd do plus our, we'd do our third order and D, cubed D or CL D alpha cubed alpha cubed plus and we'd get this this expansion that goes off uh, to infinity. Basically what what Taylor uh, taught us was that any function we can express in terms of the function evaluated at a previous point plus an infinite summation of all of the derivatives of that function. So when we say that we're going to keep only the first, the first order terms, we basically come in here and we just say we're going to throw away all of those. And we're just assuming that those are um, equal to zero. So we're going to introduce some, some coefficients and we'll say that, hey, this guy corresponds to that one. Obviously, that one is that one. And so we have these partial derivatives. And we're just, since this, we look at this one partial derivative, the partial of C sub L with respect to alpha, evaluate at 0, 0, 0. This is a constant, right? And so we'll say, hey, let's just call that C sub L sub alpha. So this is our our aerodynamic coefficient, the L corresponds to lift, and this is the alpha corresponds to the alpha contribution. And then we're going to do other comp terms. We have this, again, we have lift, and then we're going to do the Q contribution. And likewise, we have lift and our delta E contribution. Excellent. There's one little, one more little thing that's um, in here. Alpha and 
Delta E are defined in terms of radians, so they're unitless. A Q is defined in terms of radians per second. So we have this inverse seconds. So it's it's got this it's a unit, right? So what this will do, C is our chord defined in meters. So this is meters divided by meters per second, because we have VA. And we're going to multiply by Q, which is radians per second. And then we'll we'll cancel out all of our units and we'll end up just with radians. Okay, which is which is really nice. Then all of our terms are defined in dimensionless parameters. Okay. So we then define these dynamic coefficients and we'll just say that we'll we're going to we're going to look at some of these. We don't need to worry about stability and control derivatives quite yet. We'll jump back into that in a in a future lecture. But the the main idea here is that we've now approximated our lift force in terms of we have our physical parameters out front and then we're saying it's a linear contribution from each one of our individual parameters that that really contribute to to that force. And so that's that's the model uh, we're going to utilize almost. And we'll, we'll talk about that caveat here in just a sec. So we can express each one of our our drag force and our moment force in a similar fashion, where again, if we're just to look at this term right here, we have this, uh, this coefficient where D corresponds to drag. And again, this sub alpha corresponds to the alpha contribution. So we're just going to approximate our lift, drag, and our moment um, contribute or lift and drag forces in our and our m. This is our going to be about the um, jb axis, right? The moment about the jb axis. Um, just in terms of linear contributions of each one of these these parameters. Okay, and it's really this is valid for small angles of attack. So in other words, um, when our angle of attack, when our aircraft is traveling pretty close to the same, um, to, to where V sub A is pointing. This corresponds to low wind conditions, right? Um, so when our, when our angle of attack is small, we're gonna have the flow uh, remain attached over the wing. Uh, this is this is fantastic, and and ends up being a great model if our um, if this holds true. However, we can quickly get into a, what's known as a stall condition. So if we come here, the this the top figure is showing, hey, we have a moderate angle of attack. It's still the the flow is still attached, but once we jump up and we start having a high angle of attack with respect to again the 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 relative. Um, wind vector. Um, we will our, the flow across our our wing will become separated, uh, and then we end up having the the shape of our wing uh, becomes has less of effect on our on the lift and drag forces. Right. So what this this ends up telling us is that um, it's if we're going to have a high angle of attack, uh, our linear contribution is our linear model is ends up being a really really poor model for what's going on. Um, so because these angle of attacks and here's a here's a chart that shows uh, anomaly a true so this is our c sub c sub l versus alpha in degrees, right? So this solid line is our is a, a true model of what's going on. And we'll see that between here, in this case, we have to a little bit below, below, and a below, uh, below negative 20 and above 20 degrees for our angle of attack. This linear model shown here is a really great approximation. But outside of that, um, it breaks down really quickly and this is a 
really bad approximation. So again, this is bad over here. So we don't want to use um, this really bad model outside of that, that um, range where, where it shows that it's really nice. So what we do here instead is we say, hey, uh, the book goes in and it discusses this idea of a flat plate model, which, can, which basically is just saying that our, that our aircraft wing looks like a flat plate. Again, the shape doesn't matter as, as much. Um, and so that we're not getting the we're not getting the nice flow like we were under low and moderate angle attacks. And our C sub L coefficient has a very different value uh, for that flat plate model. And so what we do is we just combine our linear model and our flat plate model, and we have just this, this transition period um, where we transition between the, the linear model and the flat plate model uh, to get a much better approximation for that nonlinear model of, of the, that force. So we write that if we for to take this, these forces, if we go up here, right? We're going to keep all of these terms. We're going to keep these. And we're going to take these terms and we're going to put them into a C sub L of alpha and a C sub D of alpha. Okay, so coming back down here, that's what we have, C sub L of alpha. So our C sub L of alpha, um, we'll see that we use the linear model uh, for part of it and we use the flat plate model for another part where this sigma function, that's a function of alpha, it's just a sigmoid, it's just a blending function. Okay, so we're gonna transition from one, one model to another. And we can see the shape of this blending function right here, where at zero it's gonna be, well at zero it's gonna be zero, and for values that are high, it's gonna be one, right? So we come up here, and what we're doing is um, when our alpha is small, right, so that's going to be zero, it basically cancels out that term, cancels out this entire term, and we're just left with the, the linear model. Right, when, uh, when alpha is big, then it's going to be roughly equal to one, cancel out that portion of the model, and leave us with the flat plate model. And this will go to unity. Okay, so that's just our transition function. It's just a, implemented as a sigmoid. So once we can identify um, the functions that make up this blending value, so alpha naught and this m affects the slope of it, then we can we can write down our, our model nicely. Okay, and a similar <coughs> similarly for some of these other parameters. Oops, I almost missed this slide. So we have our C sub L of alpha, we're gonna, we need to discuss that just a little bit. We, we can use some intuition on that. We don't have to just um, solve those for those in a, a wind tunnel or something. We can have a nice value for, for what that is going to be. And this is just right here. So it just represents our sensitivity to the, uh, of lift to the angle of attack. And it, we approximate it using these physical dimensions. So we have our wingspan ratio, B is our wing, and S is, the, is basically the wing area. So we have, we have a nice value, or a really nice physical interpretation for C sub L sub alpha. Um, okay, and then we'll jump into the, the other values. Um, as we looked at the, the, these longitudinal aerodynamics, we also had our, our our drag term, right? And we already showed a linear approximation to that. But if we look at this linear approximation, so this is what we had before. When we look at that linear approximation, it's definitely incorrect down here, right? So we this is showing that if our alpha goes below some value, then we we have we can go negative. Um, which is 
definitely not accurate, right? And so instead of using this, just a pure linear model, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna use a quadratic model. And so that's what this, this line is doing for us. So we have this quadratic model, has a quadratic term anyway in it, and we will use this to, to model our parasitic drag, which is a function of basically the shape of our aircraft, the, the air pressure, friction, our, our, all of the surfaces of our aircraft. Basically as the, the um, aircraft is hitting, or the, as the air is hitting the, the aircraft, we, we get these terms. So our parasitic drag uh, is just caused by the, sh the shape of our air aircraft. We also have an induced drag term, and that's what I've already circled over here. This induced drag is uh, this drag due to, quote unquote, the, the lift uh, of the aircraft. Uh, and so this, the thing to note about this, this um, drag term, it's heavily dependent upon our alpha right? So that the angle of attack and um, everything else in terms is, is constant, right? So where we have this value E is our, is just a constant known as the Oswald efficiency factor, right? So we have the drag uh, broken up into two, two main components, parasitic and, and the induced drag. Okay. So again, want to emphasize that these, the linear models were only um, valid for small deviations from, from our nominal. Okay, so if we take our longitudinal forces and we look at them, we want to convert them to the body frame. So recall this is, we had a, a fairly simple transform to get from our stability frame. I can't spell stability to our body, right? And it was all defined in terms of this alpha. Now, if we look here, we have F sub X and Z. So we're just basically missing that Y. If we were to do the F of Y, right? It would give us, we had a, we had a zero, one, zero component. So we, what this, what this equation is just showing us is that, hey, we can take the drag and the lift since they're defined directly with using the axes of the stability frame. Um, we can use those to get the components in the X and Z. This is in our body frame um, directly. So we just have this simple two-dimensional rotation matrix, right, where this looks like a left hand rotation where we have the, the negative up top. But again, that's because we defined alpha as going from the stability frame uh, to the body frame. Okay, so we have our lift and our drag components, right? So we have the, the nonlinear terms that we talked about. And then we have just the linear contributions from, um, from Q and delta E. So we can take those, we rotate them through this trans transformation, oops, rotate them through that transformation, and we end up getting our uh, components in the uh, body X and body Z frame. So that's, this component is just the, the F drag and F lift multiplied by that, that top row. Okay, so we've gone from our lift and drag forces into the forces acting upon the, the body frame of the aircraft. Okay, so the, the final thing we didn't talk about yet was the pitching moment. So very similar to the, the lift and the drag moment, we've defined this aerodynamic coefficient C sub M, which is, an, which is a function of alpha, Q, and delta E, right? And so if we, looked, if we were to look at this pitching moment, recall that the pitching moment is going to be the moment about the axis that's coming out of the wing. So as we pitch, as we get these forces uh, that are affecting our aircraft, it's going to cause our aircraft to go up and down, rotating about that 
that JB axis. So we're just going to use for the pitching um, moment, we're just going to use a very similar um, linear model, right? So we have a linear contribution in terms of um, all of our all of our different components that were um, that it's a function of. Uh, to obtain those values, we we need to utilize uh, computer aided design models as well as uh, you know wind tunnels to help us actually get the the precise values for for those coefficients. Okay, so now we'll jump into the lateral dynamics. So we've discussed everything in terms of the the longitudinal. Now we jump into lateral. So we'll see here that the lateral causes forces in the y direction, right? So we're going to get a force pushing us side to side. Um, we also have defined L and N. If you recall, when we're looking at this, um, this figure here, if we were to talk about L, M, and N, we have L is our moment about I, B, M, which we already uh, derived, or we already looked at in terms of our longitudinal, that's the moment about J, B, and N, that's the moment about K, B. Excellent. So we have, we have L and N, are, we're going to look at those two moments when, when we're talking about um, the lateral aerodynamics. So if we look at L, right, that's going to be uh, the major um, result from a moment about the IB axis is we're going to be rolling about that IB axis. And the N, major moment, or the major effect about um, a moment about the N axis is that we're going to be rotating about that and are changing our yaw. But again, we talked previously in chapter three that those have secondary effects as well. So it's not, it's not purely affecting just the rotation about those axes. Now, these functions, these are dynamic coefficient functions, are going to be functions of um, our angle of attack, beta, right? So our side slip, sorry, alpha is our angle of attack. So our beta angle right here, if you recall, we have our stability frame. And to, to rotate our stability frame to align, to have the I-axis then align with V sub A in the wind frame, we have this, our side slip angle beta. And if we look at P and R, right, these are our angular rates. P is our angular rate about the IB axis, and R is our angular rate about the KB axis. So those definitely are going to be causing um, our, our lateral co our sorry lateral aerodynamic coefficients are going to be a function uh, of those uh, angular rates as well. And then the final two parameters that uh, these coefficients are functions of is delta A and delta R, right? Where A was our aileron and delta R was our rudder, which we already talked about also where our ailerons cause us to roll and our uh, rudder will cause, cause major changes in yaw. Okay, so in a very similar fashion uh, to our longitudinal aerodynamics, we do a linear approximation, uh, so we can use our Taylor series expansion and just take the linear linear terms. Um, one thing to note here is that if we have a symmetric aircraft, these things are going to be equal to zero, um, which is which makes it just that much easier, right? Other than that, we need to obtain all. We don't have a lot more intuition about these parameters. Uh, we're going to obtain those. Uh, more from, <laughs> we'll obtain those from experiments in wind tunnels and, and whatnot. Um, 
So, but the, the key to note here is that we do still just have these linear um, uh, aerodynamic coefficients that we're going to be worried about. So this allows us to express our dynamics. And we've talked about everything except for, so you can ignore two components right now. So the first component, this guy, the, or these two are uh, from our propulsion. So we'll, we'll get to that in a future lecture. But we can, we can define our, we can summarize our dynamics where we've now just included um, some, some combination terms uh, uh, for, to make our expression of our dynamics a little bit easier. So we have our forces up top and we have our, our moments down low. So we, we now have a, a great, a much greater understanding of where these, um, where these elements are coming into play. The great thing about this, uh, we've already rotated everything into, into the, the correct, uh, correct frame. So now we have these are in our body frame and as well as the moments in our body frame. So then we had our gravity. And again, oops, recall that our gravity doesn't cause any moments. And then we have our longitudinal and lateral um, aerodynamic um, effects. Excellent. So now we have now we have the ability to besides our propulsion, we can now model the forces and moments that are acting on our aircraft.